Hi, and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh, and we are going to talk about something a little bit different than the regular chemistry stuff that we've been talking about lately. What we need to talk about today is something called, uh, that I'm going to call academic self-efficacy. And what this is, is it's a theory, it's really a theory of behavior, a theory of social learning, a theory that was fleshed out over basically the entire research lifetime of a gentleman named Albert Bandura, and since by many other folks. Um, basically, we're going to start with this quote and kind of di dissect it and talk about it a little further. And hopefully this video will be less than five minutes. All right, so in terms of what this quote says, I'm sure you can read it, but I'll read it out loud just to make sure we're all on the same page. People make causal contributions to their own person uh, their own psychosocial functioning through mechanisms of personal agency. And okay, we'll talk about what personal agency is, but let's keep going. Among the mechanisms of agency, none is more central or pervasive than beliefs of personal efficacy. Okay, what is this trying to get to? When we talk about this idea of academic self-efficacy, what are we really talking about? What we're trying to flesh out is kind of this idea of why do some people succeed in every class they're in and some people don't. And those people who succeed in every class they're in may have the prerequisites, they may not. You never know whether they have the prerequisites or not. They actually succeed no matter what. What is it about them that helps them succeed so thoroughly every time they come into a class? Well, Albert Bandura thought that it had a lot to do with this idea of personal efficacy. And what we're going to do is we're going to make it kind of into an academic setting. So why do people succeed in classes and degrees more so than other folks? Okay. Part of it has to do, it kind of dissected this into these mechanisms of personal agency. There are all kinds of mechanisms of personal agency, and that's a very uh, psychological kind of uh, moment of terminology there. But what we're really needing to dive into is what is the self-efficacy idea really, what is it comprised of? Okay, what it's comprised of is it's comprised of two pieces. It's comprised of a belief, and the belief is that you can do this, okay? That this is a class that you can, you can achieve whatever measure of success that you need to achieve within it, whether you have the prerequisites or not. Um, to some degree, I think of this kind of like as um, grabbing the bull by the horns and riding <laughs> until it's done. And this is particularly important um, in classes like STEM, where the material is not easy. It is not easy material. It takes a lot of hard work to make that material clear. And that belief is what keeps you going. Okay? The other piece is that it has to have a goal. You have to have a goal in order to do this. You have to have a visualization of a class and the end goal in that class, maybe, maybe the final grade. It has to be task specific. And one of the things that people with a great deal of academic self-efficacy have is they have an idea of maybe this is an overwhelming goal to begin with, but I'm going to break it into pieces that I can do and pieces that I can actually accomplish. And once I get those pieces accomplished, they're going to build towards something larger that actually will get me where I want to go. Okay, Much has been made of this idea of academic self-efficacy. Albert Bandura actually thought that it was helpful to have a slightly higher belief that you could do something before, uh, than actually what you might be able to accomplish because having slightly higher, uh, uh, a si slightly better idea that you could accomplish that a little bit more than you actually had actually helped most people accomplish the goal. Not crazy, <laughs> not having like, I can do anything, but slightly more, okay? So in terms of academic self-efficacy, I think this idea is really something that needs to be pervasive. There are ways to teach, there are ways to learn in such a way 
that you can ha increase your academic self-efficacy. Modeling the behavior is one of them. Testing frequently so that you get an idea of whether you got that or not. Um, peer modeling. There are lots of possibilities in terms of increasing academic self-efficacy, but it is kind of along the lines of one of the most important things to have in order to succeed in college, in the college setting, and really in terms of larger ideas, not just academic, but just in terms of self-efficacy. It's one of the pervasive, the central and pervasive moments in terms of succeeding in life. Until we see each other again, I do.